Let me let me do this last section for all the do-gooders, all the talkers. You know, Tone Talks the project is is you know I, I just want to just share certain things that I come around. So many ways it's interesting because this race, the way we set up, we don't really respect academics. We don't respect levels. There's levels to this. You know, if I don't know something, I'm going to go talk to the best in the business. You know, when it comes to wealth, I try to talk to Byron because he one of the wealthiest. I don't, y'all don't understand when somebody paid $300 million for cash for a channel, the weather channel, they worth a billion dollars. And that's not all the money, though. Y'all thinking about this fortune. Fortune don't know what they talking about. They, they, you know, they only have so much information. Just know this, that that channel was bought with cash from a black person. Sandy Darity from Duke University, you know, I, I reach out to him. If I, if I got a very abstract concept, I'm going to bounce it off him just to see what you think. And nine times out of ten, actually ten out of ten, he said I'm right. He might give me a little twist on it, but he say I'm right. Ain't nobody been saying this for black folk, particularly black males. So when I said it, sound loud. Because somebody got to get loud, and it's time. Let me read a couple of these weird comments from YouTube, and they are weird. Black people need to start, this is, uh, let me see this, D-A-B Smooth Beats. That's his name. Black people need to start investing money that we do have into our own businesses and supporting other black businesses instead of buying Jordans, clothes, and other useless crap. If we just did that, we would see a drastic economic improvement. Look, the work by Sandy Darity and Dark Hamlet proves that you don't know what you're talking about. Most of black people spend money on like soap and like discretionary goods. This whole idea of buying Jordans as being a black problem is just nonsense. But the bigger problem is wealth begets wealth and we don't have no wealth. Do you understand that like the, the little bit of black wealth that we have is basically pensions and homes held by boomers? That's it. There's no discretionary wealth that can be taken and invested instead. And for those people that believe that, then get 10 of your friends together and just show us all 10 of y'all got 100,000 liquid. And that's not a lot, though. That's just like every day. Because like I told you, I'm not guessing. I do I do data. The Federal Reserve shows us that 13%, 13% of white families out of 83 million, out of 83 million homes, I'm sorry, 15% out of 83 million white homes has, has more than a million dollars. A full million have more, more than $10 million. A million white homes. You don't, you're not going to start your business in a vacuum just for black people. It's going to be a restaurant in the same shopping center as a bunch of white people's franchises that's been there. This idea that black people have wealth, it doesn't even get supported by your own black people. And then I'll tell you, they don't. They don't have wealth. So it's not a spending problem. It's a wealth problem. The next one. I'm telling you, I love you, Tone. Even though it may not seem like it sometimes, we need what you bring. The facts are the facts. But I have a firm belief that black people exist outside of what is known to be possible. We always astonish. We always challenge the odds. This is Jay Boogie. You can't live on feelings and your kids can't eat that. Let me say that again. You can't live on feelings and your kids can't eat that. I don't think we understand that America is in a place where wealth has calcified. And a lot of y'all are living through your grandma's eyeballs. You living in your granddaddy's living room today. And this is a new day. This is a day where black wealth does not exist anymore. And the only way to change that is transformative government. Now, I'm not saying we're in a place where that government is going to transform. We're in a Republican government. But all these little fit, these little weird little statements of, of self-help books, yeah, it'll help you with your weight. Yeah, it'll help you with your heart disease. But it ain't going to help you with wealth. That's not how wealth works. Not in the time of scarcity like we're in. You can learn it later. You live in it now. I know that for a fact. But you can learn it later or listen to me now. That's the only two choices you have. 
I'm not guessing. I'm not. I'm not playing. And I'm telling you, wealth ain't playing. America is coming, and this whole idea of that we work outside of what is known possible. None of that works. What that actually leads you to do is be apolitical and sit up and watch the Cosby Show again. Next one. Africa is on the come up, so all those black blacks that are Afrocentric, like myself, please be on the lookout because the continent is about to accept us all. Some Afro-Americans say no, but just keep your eyes open. So this guy, born here, descendant of American slavery, we seen the article from the young lady that talked about her great-granddaddy traded black slaves. We know Africa is a continent, not a country, with 54 countries inside of it. He believes that there's going to be a magic self-help through Africa where they're going to look out for us. None of this makes any sense. You got people talking they probably ain't never been to Africa. I'm tired of talking to people that tell me that they African ain't been to Africa. I've been to Africa. It was cool. But get me back to America. I don't think we understand the quality of living here. This is a first world country. The first world country. Of first world countries. In so many ways we just create stuff. This whole, These men. These are all men. If they lead your home and you a woman. God help you. I think a lot of us have serious, serious questions to answer about why we like to hear from people who reaffirm magical, fantastical talk over dealing with the reality of what we need to face and confront to have real stable outcomes. This is not stable or sane. This is fantastical, what this man said. And that's Rabian Harris. Makes no sense. Now, the last one is transformative government, question mark. Is this a joke? If that is the only solution, we're fucked because that is never going to happen. You the man that made that decision for everybody. We've seen it before, and it wasn't thousands of years ago. We've seen the New Deal. We've seen Lyndon Johnson stand at Howard and give a speech where he talked about affirmative action and the Voting Rights Act. All this was transformative. If it wasn't transformative, you could still be in slave chains. You could still be drinking out of water fountains that said whites only. We've seen transformative government. You just don't believe in it because you think you can survive without it and you can't. Well, then suffocate then. I'm not going to suffocate. This is only the first step of a long-term project. But we still in the first step because y'all still got to learn. And Tontas going to bring that heat every week here on Dash Radio, Dash Talk X. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Please share this video. Use the Super Chat. Go to tonetalks.org if you want to subscribe or donate. I'll see y'all next week. Thank you for tuning in to Tone Talks.